What's going on dudes and dudettes? Excuse the hair, but I guess we'll have to get through this. So, yeah, when it came to the Yahoo and Rivals doing some rankings for the Big Ten transfer portal stuff, they did give USC a B-, minus, which isn't that surprising just because they did bring in some talented players, just maybe not at the most needed positions, maybe like on the offensive tackle side or definitely the interior defensive line side, but it seemed like every guy, especially on the defensive interior side, they would always end up being in a competition and an outbidding war when it came to money. And even when these guys were from lower end Division One schools and all this stuff, then all of a sudden, you know, teams would come out of nowhere and start paying up for a guy who probably doesn't really deserve it for pretty much a one-year rental. So USC is not all about that. And I think that's probably because they're saving up their money the next couple years when it comes to getting certain players entering the portal so they're playing it smart right now better to wait than bring in somebody that it's either going to cause drama or maybe even make some of the incoming guys later in next year's class at that position get upset because there's somebody else there sticking around for a couple of seasons so I don't mind them taking their time and doing their due diligence and selecting the correct players so We'll just have to wait and see what happens there. And then Bronny James, during that combine for the NBA, was interviewed by the Lakers right after. So it's not that surprising since Rob Palenka, the GM of the Lakers, was pretty much there hanging out with LeBron, who was there to watch him on one of those second dates, I believe. So, yeah, either way, I guess it's cool that he got interviewed by him, the ex-USC guy. But I don't know. Like I said... If they do select them, hopefully it is for that 55 pick overall. I think it is whatever it is in the second round instead of at 17. But like I said, that 17th pick is probably going to be used in a trade anyway. So you never know. And there was a track and field player on the men's side. I believe his name is Johnny Blockberger. He was recently named the Pac-12 Men's Track Athlete of the Year. So that's pretty good. Honor for him, obviously one of the last Pac-12 athlete players of the year on the men's side to win it. So that's a pretty good recognition too. And I always forget too that USC on their men and women's side are pretty good when it comes to track and field and all those Olympic type sports, even swimming and stuff too. So yeah, I'm expecting a lot of people do some good things later in their careers or especially after <clears throat> they leave USC and hopefully represent Team USA. But even if you're representing another country, that's pretty cool too. Like this other swim and dive woman, I believe her name was Leticia Lay Transom. And she is apparently going to be competing for New Zealand in the swim and dive categories in this Summer Olympics. So that's a pretty cool get for her. And obviously don't usually root for New Zealand, but I will be rooting for the, her whenever she's swimming or diving in those competitions because she is an ex-USC alum, so congrats to her as well. There you go. That's a little less distracting. Thank you once again to my stepfather's company, Sewing and Reaping, for this awesome shirt. But yeah, when it came to an ex-USC chief of staff, I don't even know exactly what that is when it comes to you know certain type of positions for other coaches or whatever behind the scenes people but he was that while at USC then got hired by the Detroit Lions to do something in their front office and now it looks like he's going to be rehired again from the Washington Commanders I believe that's what they call him now as something like high ranking in their front office too so that's obviously a pretty big time upgrade for him it's just obviously a pretty bad program and you know, franchise he's going to haven't had that much success, but they are bringing in the right people as it looks like. So yeah, congrats to him, obviously the next USC guy. And then both Kennedy Smith and Kaylee Heichel, we talked about them pretty recently about going out for that under 18 Team USA team, and it looks like they made it. So they will be competing in Columbia at some point this summer. So hopefully they will be able to capture the gold or whatever. They need to do to make it look good for Team USA. So yeah, looking forward to that. Then there was his four-star 2026 defensive lineman. I believe his name was Viliami Moala. 
and he recently put up like a picture of all his offers and it looked like USC was on there. I don't know if there was an official update on certain posts on social media that they did offer him, but it looks like it was official if he's going to put it on, you know, a picture like that. So yeah, that's cool to see. Obviously a very talented player for the future class next season, but they're definitely trying to go after four star and above players when it comes to that defensive line in 2026 so i'm not mad about that there's a lot of usc baseball info to get through right now so i'll start with the pac-12 tournament their last one they will be playing utah i believe tomorrow on tuesday and then they get oregon on thursday i always forget like baseball and softball in college they kind of have like a mini tournament like a group of four teams and whereas the best record of that gets to advance or whatever i don't know the softball is pretty confusing even though Duke was pretty victorious over the weekend. I'll probably get into that in a separate video. But yeah, we'll see how the USC men's do. I think it's like the first time they've been in the top four in consecutive seasons in the Pac-12 since like 2014 and 2015. But also Coach Sank, it's like the first time they've had back-to-back -back seasons of like 17 conference wins since like 2001 and 2002. So yeah, it's pretty great what Coach Sank has been doing for this program. And like I said, there is a pretty good local guy. I mean, I'm pretty much like, you know, walk, a walk, what do they call that? Like a throw, a throw of a rock away or something like that. I forget the saying, but I'm pretty close to that right-handed pitcher, 2025 prospect, Seth Hernandez. And yes, sadly, I think we did. I did mention that he was going to Vanderbilt, but there was an offshoot that he would like to stay local and, go to USC that I would be pretty ecstatic as well but yeah if he I forget if he's a 2025 prospect does that mean he's a junior now or a senior but if he's going to be a senior next season too then I might have to go and check him out in one of those games especially if he's going to be that talented of a guy coming out from you know one of the local schools from here so that'd be pretty cool to see and yes, when it came to Greg McElroy of ESPN, apparently he said that he gives Lincoln Riley a 20% chance to win a national championship while he's coaching at USC, which is pretty good odds. Obviously, they probably went up because now you can get 12 teams into the playoffs and it probably could be expanded to 16 if we talked about last summer as well. So. Obviously, it's easier. I'm pretty sure every coach's numbers who hasn't won a national championship went up after that. But I guess he still believes USC has some cachet and with Lincoln Riley, too, that they can be able to get to the promised land once again. And I am not mad about that. So, yeah, definitely looking forward to seeing the future of this USC football program. Thanks for watching, people. Like and subscribe. Comment down below. Let me know what y'all think. Have a great rest of your day. Bye. Bye, don't.